what up y'all it's your boy box truck in and we back with another one all right y'all so you know me i'm gonna get right to the point raw and uncut might get a few phone calls that's the only time i have to cut out but all right y'all is it worth having a dispatcher did i say that right or is yeah is it worth is having a dispatcher worth it that's what this video is on so all right i'm gonna get right to the point uh in my opinion, yes and no. And I witnessed this firsthand. So this is coming from someone that's on the road. I'm on the road now as we speaking. So, all right, y'all. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with why I say, yeah. It's a yeah and no for me. So the reason I say yeah is if you need your time. So me, I wanted my time at first. I wanted my time. Uh, you know, I'm in the stocks, I'm in some other business plans. And I didn't want to be on that low board for six to eight hours, possibly, trying to get that best load and then having to drive, you feel me? So I had a dispatcher at first and I would tell him just to call me when he finds a load for me. I told him what I would want, the rate I wanted, never would get the rate I wanted. But yeah, so he would call me when he got me a load. And then, you know, I'll be honest. It, it was hard, man. Like like averaging a dollar seventy, dollar eighty, like yeah, that's okay. But whether you a new authority or not, you can average over two dollars a mile. And I'm telling you that right now. I'm telling y'all, I'm averaging that as a new authority. Well now I hit my three months. I hit my three months not too long ago. But as a new authority, when I started dispatching for myself, I was averaging over two dollars a mile, sometimes two fifty. It's times where I got loads over three dollars a mile. So I'll say yeah if you have the right dispatcher, if you have a good dispatcher that is actually putting the work in for you and not just accepting that first load he sees just to make his or her ten percent. Because a lot of dispatchers just want to make that 10%. They'll get frustrated and just book you a load and then throw you an excuse. And I'm just being real. I'm just being straight up. Don't believe that BS that dispatchers tell you, oh, this, oh, that. Oh, they're not going hard for you. And they're most likely dispatching for four to five other people. So how can they focus on you when they dispatch for four to five other people? You only got one load board. And if you got two at the most, like... Come on, let's be realistic. Four to five people, you're going to swap through both phones? At the, come on, it's, it's not realistic. I say, being realistic, a dispatcher should have two to three drivers at the max. That's that. Two to three drivers at the max. So, um, yeah. So, I say, yeah, if you have the right dispatcher and you're trying to save your time. You know, and do other things with your time and not have to look for a load, you know, a lot. It might, sometimes you'll get a load right there and then, first hour. Sometimes it might take eight hours to find you that real good load. So, um, yeah. And then another thing, well, I'm about to get into the note. So it's a yeah for me if you have the right dispatcher and you're trying to save time. That's about it for me. Yeah, that's about it. That's the only only way I say yeah. If you're doing other things with your time, or you don't want to be looking for a load and then driving on the road, you know, looking at that phone screen, you know, might get a little tired. I don't know. I don't know how you are, you know. But um, yeah, uh, I know that can be a little tiring. So yeah, if you uh, if you want to save your time, if you want to, uh, or you don't want to. Like I just said, you don't want to be on the low board all day and then have to drive. Uh, that, and uh, yeah, if it's the right dispatcher that's getting you over that $2 a mile average, because you can get over that $2 a mile average. And that's period. Like, I'm not, I don't even, I'm not going to argue with nobody. I got proof. I got Raycons. I got Raycons. And look, now look, you might get a load that's a dollar eighty, dollar seventy, right? Or dollar seventy, dollar eighty, dollar ninety, whatever, right? But it's about the average at the end of the week. So you might get that dollar seventy, eighty to a zone that's gonna get you that two fifty coming out. You see what I'm saying? 
So it's about the average. Now, every load don't have to be $2 a mile, average. I mean, for me, for the most part, I, I, I average over $2 a mile every single load. But sometimes I'll take a load for, I'll take a, I'll take a load for $1.70, $1.80 from, uh, from a certain zone to get me that $2.50. I'll do it sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes it depends how much I'm up on my average. So, you know, if I done got a few loads for like 250, you know, over that 240, 250 a mile, and then I get that dollar 70, I'm still at like 220 a mile. You see what I'm saying? I I'll do it. But I'm not gonna take multiple loads under $2 a mile for that week. I might take one in the high dollar, dollar 80, dollar 90, maybe a second. But like I said, only if it's taking me to a zone or a place, I know that I'm gonna get over that 250 a mile, you know? So uh, yeah, that's about it. But the reason I say no, here's why I say no. I got a couple reasons. So ain't nobody gonna get you. The bet, nobody can find a better rate than you'll find for yourself because you know what you want. You see what I'm saying? trying to get over so yeah nobody's going to find you a better rate than what you want for yourself if that made sense another thing that 10 percent man saving that 10 percent that five six hundred dollars a week because you should be averaging five thousand minimum if you averaging under that hit me up asap but five hundred five thousand is the minimum and i don't even like to touch five thousand I like six and up. I like six thousand and up. That's what I like. You know, I like to drive my three thousand miles a week and and get six thousand and up. You feel me? That's that's what I like. So if you under that five thousand mark, hit me up asap. All right, but um, back to the point. So, uh, what I was just saying. So, all right, yeah. So say. So that five to six hundred a week, right? Minimum. That's that ten percent that dispatch is making. You know? And uh just times that by fifty two, you probably get about like thirty grand, something around there. You probably get about like thirty grand. Just think about that. You could be saving at a year, right? And then also I dispatch for a guy. So not only do I save thirty grand, I make thirty grand. And in my first, my, my guy's first week, he told me he was only making 4,000 a week. His first week, we did 7,000. First week, 7,000. You know, I'm not gonna put them all out there unless he wants to be put out there. But um, yeah, so I did $7,000 for my guy first week. And I made 690 for my 10% fee. Uh, oh yeah, and if a dispatch is charging over 10%, Dead, 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 dead. Ten percent is the rate a dispatcher should be charged. Anything else? Go ahead with the greedy BS. Hey, look, if you charging over ten percent, you just better be getting that three dollar over three dollars a mile. And I don't, I don't think that's going, going, going to be happening. You know. Uh, so yeah, or just stop being greedy, man. Show love. Like ten, ten percent is the right rate, man. Ten percent is the right, the perfect rate. Anything else to me is just more, and that's that. Uh, yeah. So what I was saying. So not only will you save that ten percent, which is about thirty thousand a year, five to six hundred a week. That's about thirty thousand a year, fifty-two weeks. And then on top of that, you'll have an asset that can make you, if you dispatch for a driver, can make you. 30,000 a year. So now, not only is you saving 30, which means you're making 30, it's actually 30 in your pocket. You can make another 30 on top of that. So that's an extra 60,000 a year. Now, hold up, we ain't done there, right? So say you go from averaging a dollar 70, dollar 80. I hear some people like the average in a dollar 50 and lower than that, which is sad. For real, for real, it's really sad. Hit me up, like I said. Uh, but Say you're averaging $1.70, 
and then you go from averaging a dollar seventy to two dollars and twenty cent. Say you go from averaging a dollar seventy to two dollars and twenty cent, right? Say you drive the regular three thousand miles a week, six hundred miles a day. Times that by fifty-two, that's one hundred fifty-six thousand miles a year, right? That you can drive if you're driving at three thousand a week. Sometimes you drive more, sometimes less, but that's average. What six hundred miles a day? That's average. Uh, now look, that fifty cent, right? You see where I'm about to go with it, right? That one one hundred and fifty-six thousand miles divided by two. That gets you about. $78,000, $78,000 extra because you went from averaging $1.70 a mile to $2.20 a mile, sometimes more, sometimes less, right? But right around that range. So that's an also on top of the, the 30 you saving, which you making. If you dispatch for a driver now that you got an asset, that's an extra 30. Call you right back, all right? All right. Not only you saving thirty thousand, making I'm tripping, my fault. And then you got an asset that can make you another thirty because you can dispatch for one person while you're driving. Uh, I mean, not everybody can, but I can. I'll just say I can. But even if you don't do that, we'll just say the thirty. We'll leave out the other thirty. And then that's $78,000 extra. So you had an extra $100,000 minimum a year, y'all. Cause you just went from averaging $1.70 a mile to 220, hold up. And not only, you're averaging $1.70, $1.80 with a dispatch, man. So that means that your $1.70 isn't $1.70. That's $1.50 or $1.53 if you minus that 17 cent off that, that 10% of $1.70 or that 18 cent off of $1.80. Y'all see where I'm going? Y'all see where I'm going with this? Even if you averaging $2, you're minus 20 cent. You see what I'm saying? That 10% you could be keeping. So really you ain't even averaging it. So to me, like I said, it's only worth it if you have the right dispatcher. Like me, I'm the right dispatcher because I go hard. It'd be some days I'll be on that load board for six to eight hours hawking my guy a load down before I even get myself a load. You feel me? Hawking him a load down because I'm not accepting no bull crap. Because I put myself in his shoes. I wouldn't want that. So why would I get him that load? You see where I'm coming from? A lot of people don't think like that. A lot of people just want their 10%. Now it'd be days I'd be frustrated, but I ain't giving up. I'm not no quitter. I'm gonna get my guy that rate. I'm not going to sit there and settle for no BS. And that's that. Uh, and then another thing is a lot of people do not have to know how to properly dispatch. A lot of people that dispatch never even been on the road. And it's a lot of things you need to know with dispatching. It's a lot of things. You know, it's a lot of things. It's more than just taking a course. Period. It's more than just taking a course and... Uh, watching YouTube videos way more than that. Way, way more than that. Now, it ain't nothing to stress. It's not, it's not mm, too much more, but it's definitely a good amount of information that you need to know that's not on YouTube and that's not in most of the courses. And I'm just being, being realistic with y'all, you know. I see a lot of them courses and I see a lot of YouTube videos. I actually will watch and take some of them myself, man. They just tell you basic information. They don't really tell you what you need to know, you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, so like I was saying, that's an extra hundred thousand minimum, and then you got an asset that you can teach your your siblings, some some friends, build a company, and have someone going from making four to five hundred dollars a week to making dispatching for three people. You know, you get people they they they. Uh, they 6,000 a week, 600, 600, 600. That's 1,800 dollars you just made dispatch and sent behind the laptop, you know? But um, but yeah, 
you will have to work for it. Some days it'll be easy. You know, if you get a good rate and it only took an hour or two, it's okay. That's good. But do not settle for no bad rate. That's what I'm saying. Do not. And hold up. Every good rate ain't a good rate. Let me get into that. Every good rate is not a good rate. You feel me? You can get a good rate going into a dead zone. You sit it for a couple days. It's automatically out the window. You lost. You lost. If you're sitting at a day, you lost. You lost. That's the day you could be making money. But you thought you was getting a good rate and you went to a dead zone. So, and... Yeah, it's a lot. And, and everything in the East isn't good. The Midwest is good, right? But everything in the Midwest isn't good. Uh, the South, I don't, I, I try to stay away from there, but a lot of things in the South aren't good. The West, I don't even talk about the West. But like I said, it's a, a, a good amount of information you need to know. And if you want to learn this information, you can get with me. You can get with me. And the reason I do mentorship is because I go above and beyond for you. I'm always here to call away. I'm going to make sure you're, you're good. I'm never going to leave you hanging. Never. If I'm on the phone, if I'm doing something, and you give me that text emergency because you, you need me right now, I'm going to straight call you. And most of the time, I'm going to just pick up your call right away, even when I'm busy. That's just me. So, you know, I, I don't I do courses. I just do straight mentorship. I don't knock nobody. I just, uh, it's just me, man. I just do mentorship. I walk you through everything you need to know, A to Z. Um, literally everything you need to know, I go above and beyond. Literally, I go above and beyond because I want you to be good. I don't want you to need me. I don't want you to have to be always hitting me up with questions. I just want to give you all the game that you need to know. I don't want you to need me. That's, that's what I don't respect about a lot of people that do courses. Then, they, then to talk to them, to get in contact with them, it might take them a week or days to get back to you. You need them that day right there and then. You need them right there and then. But they say, no, now you need to, now you need to pay for a consultation. Like, that just ain't fair to me. Like, I mean, to me, that, I just don't think that's fair. So, um, and yeah, I was one of them that would buy people's courses and then, you know, they tell you you need to buy consultations or stuff like that. And I just... To, uh, I don't like feeling like I need people, especially when I'm paying for it. Like, I still need you when I'm paying for it. Like, that's that's not fair. And that means if I'm still needing you, that means you didn't give me the proper information that I needed. You just gave me basic information that I could have just learned on YouTube. So, uh, that, that's that's why I do mentorship. Uh, and yeah, so, um, so, yes and no. I told you why I feel like uh, it's a, it's good to have a dispatcher, but if you don't need a dispatcher for them reasons, then I'll say no. But me personally, me personally now, I I will never get a dispatcher again because I have multiple dispatchers and they just give you the runaround. Most of them never been on the road. Most of them talk like they know what they're talking about when they just accepted that first load because they just wanted the 10%. Because no matter what, if they get you a bad rate, they still get paid. So that's why I didn't really, I don't never, I don't never want to get a dispatcher again. Well, I will never get a dispatcher again. Um, yeah, that's why I will never get a dispatcher again. Because nobody will find you that rate that you want besides you. And at least if you accept that dollar eighty dollar ninety, you accepted that. You don't gotta pay ten percent on that, and you know why you accepted that rate. You know you're gonna average out, and you're gonna get that rate that you need. Um, but yeah, so uh, I will never hire a dispatcher again. And I told you the reasons, the good reasons to have a dispatcher. Uh, but if you don't need them for them reasons, like if you ain't got another business plan going or, you know, or you just, you, or you want, like you need your time and stuff like that. If, uh, if you, if you're, if it's not none of them reasons, then I'll say dispatch for yourself. 
Or, or hold up, if you don't know how to dispatch. That's another reason. If you don't know how to dispatch, and that's why you can get with me, and I'll give you all the game you need, and I'll make sure you're good. Whether you're a new authority or not, that's a myth. You can still average $2 a mile. That's it. And the reason why the rates be so bad is, first off, these brokers be, a lot of them be double brokering. Not only that, a lot of people accept BS rates. So that's why they're so comfortable putting them BS rates on the board, if I'm being, being real. So them brokers get comfortable putting them rates out there because they know someone's gonna accept that BS rate and lowball themselves. Or it's most likely a dispatcher just accepting a load to make their 10%. So, yeah. I will never have hire a dispatcher again. I'm gonna always forever dispatch for myself. Um, if there was a dispatcher out there like me, then then I would hire them to get my time to do other things. But ain't nobody gonna get you that rate that you want besides yourself. And uh, that's just my opinion. You know, people ain't gonna sit on that board. All right, y'all, my fault. I cut out. But um, like I was saying. The same people that used to dispatch for me, which were well-known dispatchers too, well-known dispatchers. And I'm not going to rain on nobody's parade or nothing like that, or expose people. I just took my L's, my losses, and turned them into lessons. You know, God bless them. I'm not here to be exposing people and, and, and ruining for others. Um, so yeah, uh, same people that used to dispatch for me. It was a few of them. They, uh, they actually try to get the game for me now. And I just don't deal with them no more because they really used to BS me and I see they would just accept that rate. And, you know, that, uh, that hurt me a lot. That hurt me a lot. So, but I, but I moved on from it. I learned from it, and now I'm doing great. So, same people that used to dispatch for me, when I just fired them. I fired every every dispatcher I ever had. Uh, then they would watch my MC, and, and, and they somehow they would see the loads I was getting. I don't know how, and uh, and I told my dispatcher, I said, "Yeah, man, I'm averaging like 230 to 250 a mile." And he's like, "How, man?" And that put me on the game, man. I must be doing something wrong. But when I first hired my first dispatcher, he would sit there and tell me like, like I don't know, I like, like I don't know nothing, and like throw fits at me and stuff like that. So I, you know, I was gonna give him the game, but then I'm just like, you know what, dude? Like, I just don't, I don't want to deal with him because I'm just like. Cause I'm just thinking back, like, bro, like all them excuses you would give me. Like, you know, you just accepting them breaks. Like, dude, dude got, dude got like 20, like, bro, dude got so many people he's dispatching for. Got a whole dispatching company. And it's a few people like that. Well, it's a lot of people like that. They got dispatching companies, but they're just accepting that first rate. And they're the reason why rates are so low on the board because they're accepting BS. And then they get their 10% and then drivers are hurting. Yeah, now they hit me up for the game, and I just don't want to deal with them. I wish them the best, and I keep it pushing because it, dis it disappoints me all the excuses they used to give me. And then, uh, you don't got pilot jack, uh, you're no authority, uh, you don't got lift gate. Like, having a lift gate and a pilot jack helps, but most loads do not require a pilot jack. Most, uh, there's a lot of loads that don't. Don't uh, don't even want you to have a lift gate. There are some loads that want you to, but there's a lot of loads that say no lift gate because when you back in, you have to clamp on to the pole or whatever that is, and you can't do that when you have a lift gate. So, uh, and a lot of loads, most loads are just back right in. They load you up, no touch, go about your business. Now, yeah, you you'll miss a few loads if you don't have your pallet jack and lift gate. 
you'll miss a few loads if you have the lift gate, but it's plenty of loads. So it's just the fact that they would give me all these excuses. And then I started doing things for myself once I finally figured everything out after all them L's. I'm like, damn, like, it hit the spot. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, hit the spot. It hit the heart. Definitely hit the heart, for sure. Um, and, but yeah, I moved on from it. I'm doing my thing, and I'm doing great. And now I'm teaching people and helping people average over 6,000 a week, over $2 a mile, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's my take or input on uh, is it worth having a dispatcher? Um, I don't know if I covered everything. I tried to. Um, I'm going to say it again. It's only worth having a dispatcher if you need your time or if you're if you don't know how to dispatch or if you don't want to be on that load board trying to find you a load and and then have to drive. But it's, it's, it's not that bad. As long as you know what you're doing. Not just going on that load board, man. If you want to test it out, go ahead. But don't just go on that load board booking loads because you know you'll most likely eventually get yourself stuck or you know hurt yourself. And at that point it is worth having a dispatcher. But uh yeah, like I said, I'll mentor you how to dispatch correctly, how to make over that $2 average a mile, and uh, yeah, to have a good asset, say 10%, make an extra 100K a year, and then, uh, yeah, that's about it, but uh, I think I covered everything, I told you why it's good to have a dispatcher why it's not good to good to have a dispatcher and me personally i will never hire a dispatch again a dispatcher again um, yeah that's about it i think i'm gonna end the video right there y'all can tell i'm thinking i'll be trying to go above and beyond for y'all sometimes i get to repeating myself because uh, i just want to make sure i cover everything for y'all but if I didn't cover everything, y'all already know. Y'all could drop a comment uh, asking a question. Or y'all can hit me up in the email at boxtruckant at gmail.com. Or hit me up on Instagram at boxtruckant. Um, but yeah, that's about it, y'all. I hope I covered everything. This is raw and uncut. The video did cut out one time because uh, it said my phone storage was full. I don't know how, it's a new iPhone. Um, and I just got like the 200 gigabyte plan or whatever. Maybe one of y'all can let me know why my, why my storage is so full and I only, I haven't even used it that much. Probably only recorded a few videos. Uh, yeah, but um, I think I covered everything where I tried to cover everything. If y'all can show some love, uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm about to get up out of here, y'all. You already know. Believe and achieve. God bless. Uh, all right, y'all. I'm out of here.